Well, finally, we've managed to get our hands on the new Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Gen 9 Aura Edition, containing the new Intel Core Ultra processors. Intel have promised much better battery life, efficiency, graphics performance, and have worked with Lenovo to make a thin and light 15-inch premium laptop to rival an M3 MacBook Air and completely destroy the gains that Qualcomm have made into the laptop industry. Now, the laptop starts at £1,299 in the UK, but our version came in at 1,399, but comes with the upgraded 258V CPU, 32 gigabytes of high-speed RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Now, I do want to mention that we bought this laptop with our hard-earned money. So this isn't a sponsored review, but I do want to ask a big favor of you guys and request that you subscribe and click that notification bell. And in return, I will keep buying these laptops to bring you unsponsored, honest laptop reviews. Okay, so then let's start looking at this laptop. Now, being a Lenovo Yoga, it has the usual yoga design cues. We get a sleek, all aluminum laptop with comfortable round edges and great build quality whilst coming in at only 1.46 kilograms. Now, my only gripe with the Yoga range is just how many different models they have available and how difficult it is to often find the model that you want. So to make things easier, I have put a link to this laptop down in the description down below. Now, with regards to the ports, on the left side, we get an HDMI 2.1, a Thunderbolt 4 port, and a headset jack. Moving to the right, we get a USB-A port, a Thunderbolt 4 port, the power button, and a camera shutter switch for the privacy conscious among us. Now, overall, I am pleased with the range of ports on this laptop, but being a creator, I would have loved to have seen an SD card slot on this 15-inch laptop. Also, the power button on the side can often be a little bit annoying when you pick it up and accidentally put the laptop to sleep, though you could turn that off in the settings. At the front of the laptop, we get a nice little lip here, which makes opening the laptop very easy. And the hinges do feel very solid, and it allows you to open the actual laptop screen 180 degrees. Now, I always get people telling me that this is actually pointless, but as somebody that's often standing up and taking notes, I love the fact I can push my screen right back and it doesn't actually get limited by the laptop itself. Now, looking at the deck, we can see an aluminium palm rest with a decent sized touchpad. The touchpad is glass, it feels great, and tracking and gestures are very responsive, but I don't understand why they're using this old springboard style touchpad that you have to click the sort of the lower half. This is a premium laptop touting the new Core Ultra chips. I was expecting the haptic touchpad like we recently got on the P1 workstations that we just reviewed. Now moving up to the keyboard, we get the typical solid Lenovo keyboard with a reasonable 1.5 millimeters of travel. It's got good key pressure, white backlighting, and a decent layout. Now I am in the UK, so my layout will look very different if you're watching this from the other side of the pond, but it is still a great keyboard to type on. Now by default, the function keys will prioritize the multimedia functions, but you can easily switch it to prioritize the function keys if you prefer. Now, talking of the multimedia keys, as always, we get a useful range of functions, including the new mode key, which gives you some new functions bespoke to this new Aura range of laptops. Either side of the keyboard, you can see the speaker grills that are hiding the four speaker systems, which sounds like this. Speaker test of the Yoga Aura at 50% volume. and 80% audio. And finally, 100%. So there we go. Although they're not the actual loudest speakers that I've heard in a laptop, the audio quality is very good for not only the actual the, the bottom end and the top end. So that's actually a pretty well-rounded set of speakers. Moving up to the 15.3 inch screen, and although there is no OLED option, the IPS panel that they've actually included has been incredibly impressive. With a 2.8K 120Hz display, which has 100% P3 and 100% sRGB gamut, and it's also 500 nits of brightness, which being glossy, you're going to want. Now in the UK, we only get the touchscreen variant, but I believe in other regions, you can choose between touchscreen and non-touchscreen panel. Now above the actual screen itself, we get a 1080p webcam with noise cancelling mics that looks and sounds like this. This is a test of the webcam and the microphones on the new Yoga Slim 7i Aura Edition. Please let me know in the comment section what it looks and sounds like. And it also includes Windows Hello facial recognition, and that is incredible for those speedy logins when you open the screen. 
So now that we've looked around the actual laptop itself, let's rip the base panel open and take a look inside. Unfortunately, getting inside this laptop is pretty easy. Just a few T5 screws, then we pop off the panel with a suction pad to be greeted inside with very little we can actually upgrade. Now bearing in mind, the high-speed RAM is actually on CPU package, so that it is not upgradable. It's actually part of the CPU with these new Core Ultra 2 chips. But that does mean that we get faster RAM, so it's quite a good trade-off in my opinion, especially as we get 32 gigabytes as standard with the 258V. We also have a soldered on Wi-Fi chip, which is Wi-Fi 7, so you hopefully won't need to be upgrading that anytime soon anyway, because it is the latest and greatest. And the only thing we can really upgrade is the SSD. Now, sadly, we've got a 42 millimeter M.2 SSD in here, which does mean upgrading it is gonna be more expensive and slightly limited to the standard 80 millimeter SSDs you normally get inside a laptop. But obviously they've had to make that compromise with the 42 millimeters because it's very cramped in here. We do have a large 70 watt hour battery and some decent sized speakers. Now to actually cool the laptop, you can see we've got quite a small heat sink with a heat pipe that goes to twin fan cooling system and that pushes the air through the hinge system. But fortunately, this is a very efficient CPU, so hopefully the performance will still be good. So let's now move to the performance section to find out. So starting with the CPU side of the performance, and these new Intel chips are a completely new design. The Intel Core 258V has four performance cores and four low power efficiency cores, and it has no hyperthreading at all, so just eight cores in total. Looks like Intel are really focusing on efficiency here, and it does show with just eight cores. Running our Geekbench 6 CPU benchmark, which is a quite a short single and multi-core benchmark. The single core came in strong, but the multi-core was quite disappointing, especially when we compare it to the Ryzen and even the Snapdragon CPUs. Moving over to the Cinebench R23 and R24, again, the results are very average, and this may put some people off this chip, but as I mentioned, Intel are targeting efficiency here, and these chips sit at just 30 watts on performance mode and 20 watts on their low power mode. They don't get overly hot, and it didn't get overly loud. So I think what Intel has done here is really impressive. And in my opinion, how many people are actually fully pegging their CPUs these days in anything other than benchmarks, as so many old CPU heavy apps are now pushed over to the GPU or MPU. Now that leads me onto the new GPU in this laptop, and my goodness, this laptop has surprised me. Now when I heard Intel's claims, I expected yet another lackluster Intel integrated graphics, but this thing is genuinely impressive. For integrated graphics, it gave strong times by showing, and games that I struggled to play on my Ryzen 7840U ThinkPad were actually playing well on this laptop. Now don't get me wrong, this laptop won't replace your 4080 gaming beast, but for many people, 1080p high settings eSport titles are more than enough. Now for me, I do like to do my heavy gaming on a desktop, but I like to be able to play lighter games and strategy games on my laptop when I need a break from work, and this laptop excels here. There are enough about the games, how would it perform in 3D applications? And as expected, it absolutely breezed through Photoshop. Plus when I used Blender, it was very impressive for the size of the models that I actually create. But what really surprised me is just how well it worked in DaVinci Resolve for my video editing. Now I have never ever been able to edit on an Intel graphics laptop ever. It's just painful. And there is even limits with how much I can get away with on a Ryzen Ultrabook. But this thing managed to actually cut through my multicam 10-bit H.265 footage without any problems at all, which was really impressive. Finally, a Windows Ultrabook that can compete with a MacBook for light video editing. Now, I know many won't care about the actual video editing itself, but it is a very difficult piece of software to run, so the fact that this laptop can handle it bodes well for other pieces of software. Now, with regards to the heat and noise, this is where the efficiency comes into play. There is fan noise when you heavily utilize this laptop, but it's a pleasant whoosh. Now I'm going to use gaming as an example, and we can see that this laptop sits at a solid 30 watts in the performance mode, without any throttling at all, no matter how long we've gamed for, and with good temperatures. The laptop itself doesn't get hot on the actual palm rest or keyboard, and it wasn't even annoyingly loud. Then we can also move it down to the, like, the quietest mode, and it drops that wattage down to 20 watts, which reduces the fan noise down even more, but still gives you a great level of performance. Now all of these performance profiles are controlled in the Vantage software, which is well laid out and quick to load. Plus you can use the new mode key at the top to change a lot of these settings on the fly and a lot of the new Aura features. Now overall, the efficiency really improves the feel use of this laptop. But what about the battery life? And again, this thing is impressive. Running our battery test, streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi of 200 nits of brightness, we managed over 16 hours of battery life. That's almost up there with a the Surface laptop with the Snapdragon chip, which is our current Windows battery champion. Now to see how long it lasts when we heavily utilize the laptop, 
We ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the optimised profile and managed just over two hours. It was actually two hours and three minutes to be precise. Performance on battery was also impressive. Now when you do put it into the quiet mode, it does cut the clocks down, but the laptop still felt okay in general use. But if you leave it in the optimised mode, it feels like you're running on mains. Also being this efficient, we get a tiny little USB-C power adapter supplied with the laptop, and that won't take up much space in your bag. But you can also keep it powered with your power bank if you prefer. And when you're back at the office, you can just plug it into your monitor with power delivery for that one cable solution for the power display and peripherals. Overall, I'm really impressed with these new chips. This is a big step forward from Intel at last, and I think this may well have buried Snapdragon's chance of making any gains into the Windows space. So that takes me through to the conclusion. I want to break this down into two parts. Firstly, these new CPUs. And I have to say, well done Intel. Finally a chip I would personally buy after years of using Ryzen chips. These are a big step forward, mostly because of this efficiency. Being able to have a laptop that can handle all my day-to-day -day work with good battery life, low noise and heat, and it can even play games, that's an absolute miracle. Take that, MacBooks. And secondly, the Yoga Slim 7i Aura, and I feel Lenovo has done a great job with this model, and it really helps showcase this CPU. It feels premium, has an incredible screen, the price isn't crazy for the specs you actually get in this laptop, and it really is just a great all-round laptop that I'd be happy to take into meetings or sit at a coffee shop and pretend to do work. Now there are a couple of niggles, such as the slight touchpad sort of rattle, and using a 42mm SSD which will limit your upgrade potential, and the power button on the side did bug me a little wise, but otherwise this is a truly excellent laptop that I would personally recommend for people or even buy for myself. So those are my thoughts on this new Yoga Aura laptop. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Would you buy this laptop? And what do you think of the new Intel chips? As always, put your comments down below and I will get back to you. And lastly, thanks for watching. <laughs>